Habits and Health, Episode 79. Welcome to the Habits and Health Podcast, where we believe creating healthy habits should be easy. Brought to you by an educator and coach for anyone who wants to create a healthier life. Here's your host, Tony Winyard. Welcome to another edition of Habits and Health. My guest today is Gavin Andrews, who is the Managing Director for HeartMath in the UK and Ireland. And HeartMath is a system of breathwork, self-regulation techniques and biofeedback technology. So we're going to go into exactly how does heart math help us? What is a coherence practice? What is heart-based living? We touched upon meditation, breathing practices, heart rate variability, and much, much more. Hope you enjoy this week's show. Habits in Health, my guest today, Gavin Andrews. How are you doing, Gavin? I do very well, thank you. You're doing very well, yeah. I do cooling down today, so uh, we had that very hot weather yesterday, so it's, it's a bit more pleasant today for me. This comes out on the 16th of August, so I wonder what the weather will be like then. Maybe yeah. we'll be freezing. Or we'll have broken the records all over again, one way or the other. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. So where are you, Gavin? So I'm in Surrey. I'm in a place called Long Ditton, which is not a million miles away from Surbiton and the next to Kingston. Yeah, I, I'm not far from the Thames. I go for a nice run along the river a couple of times a week. So I'm very lucky in this area. River Thames, lots of greenery. Yeah, it's very nice here. It sounds very nice. And you're the guru for everything related to heart math in the UK. I don't know about guru. I'm the lucky guy that stands on the shoulders of the giants that invented this in California and acts as a repeater station for them over here. So I'm not the guru, but yeah, look, I run the heart math business in the UK and Ireland. And uh, yeah, which means running the heart math training programs and the products and things like that. So I'm technically the managing director for heart math UK and Ireland. So when people, when you meet, I don't know if you ever go to like network meetings or whatever, but when you encounter people who have never come across HeartMath before, mm. how do you do a sort of elevator pitch description of what it is? Blimey. Do you know what? It, it's actually quite a tricky thing to, to define because there isn't really anything else like it. Yeah. So look, Heart, HeartMath is basically a system and it's a system that includes breathwork practice, which we call coherence breathing. Some people call it resonance breathing or 0.1 hertz breathing, so breathwork component. There's a component which is to do with actually focusing within the heart, okay? So physically putting your, or mentally putting your attention in the heart, or physically feeling the heart. Uh, there's an aspect to it which is about emotion regulation, so intentionally feeling pleasant and positive feelings and emotion. And then there's a technology aspect to it which measures all of that, so we've got some biofeedback technology. So it, that's what it's a system, but basically it's just, it's a way of self-regulating. It's a way of helping you be the best version of yourself more frequently. And sometimes the way I describe it as well is it's a bit like aspects of positive psychology with breath work and a, like a Fitbit for your emotions, which is what the technology is. So it's all of those things blended into one. And a lot of people, when they first come across HeartMath, think that we are our product, which is a biofeedback device. So they think that we're a tech company. We're actually not a tech company at all. If anything, we're like a transformation company and you transform yourself with the techniques and you transfer form yourself with the technology as well that's a bit longer than an elevator so that's a tall building that one isn't it <laughs> <laughs> there's that place in dubai was it that yeah one? exactly right. <laughs> well, how when did heart math start do you know i do yeah originally it started in the 80s with a group of people who came together from various parts of the us carolina and new york and california they came together in california and uh, they were basically they were searchers and discoverers and they were trying every all things personal development all things spiritual so they all came together and they all held down separate jobs but they would meet and they would share all the things that they'd learn and over that time they developed this understanding that actually you could simplify a lot of this stuff to basically when you're feeling good pleasant positive feelings and emotions and particularly things like care and gratitude appreciation love those types of feelings that you tend to be the best version of yourself and your interactions with others tend to be the most productive as well so having realized that they then said to themselves oh blimey we, how do we share this with the world i guess we'd better create an organization so actually the, then the heart math institute which is the first organization non-profit was created in 1991 and they literally built the, like the buildings themselves and painted them themselves but then they were up and running and um they just hit the spirit of the times and they started to run training in silicon valley using their techniques this was before the technology so they became successful as a business quite quickly. We're a training company then, basically. And then it wasn't for another couple of years when they started to do their research around what is this state that we're getting in? Can we measure it? It feels real. Is it actually real? That's when they discovered all the heart rate variability stuff. So then 
not long after that's when they developed their biofeedback technology as well. So it's a really interesting story about a group of people who was practicing what they preach and then deciding they should share that with the world. And, and before we started recording, I mentioned to you that I'd been watching some of the stuff. I uh, forgot the guy's name again. Was it Roland? Dr. Roland McCready. There was some fascinated, and I'll put some links in the show notes for anyone who wants to get deeper on the whole science things. We're not going to go deep on the science here. I know. Gavin might surprise me. We might go really. But it was fascinating listening to him and watching the, there was various things on YouTube and whatever. One thing that came into my mind as I was listening to him, he repeatedly referred to, oh, and there's studies for this and there's studies for this. And it made me think, has there been a lot of doubters about this? Because he kept referring to studies as if to, look, this is reputable. So it made me think yeah. there must have been a lot of people really doubting this, the way he kept saying that. Yeah, for sure. Look, over the years, we've there's been a, a few sceptics who've decided to take an interest in us and, uh, and question some of what we're saying. Basically, so our research covers a relatively broad area that includes heart rate variability. So heart rate variability is a real thing. You know, it's, a, it's a real measure. But specifically an aspect of that called coherence. So we were measuring this to begin with, and we were measuring the impact of emotions and feelings on heart rate variability. Now, even back then, there were people um, who said, you can't control your heart rate variability. It's part of your autonomic nervous system. There's nothing you can do about your heart rhythm. So just do what your body needs it to do, you know, what, or, what, or basically whatever you're feeling might impact it, but you can't do anything about it intentionally. Even some of the very first researchers within heart rate variability didn't believe that. So that was one area where we were criticised. And then, turned out well, actually you, know, you can influence your heart rate variability and positive emotions do particularly influence what your heart rate variability is doing. And so then, then from there, we've been researching the interactions between the heart and the brain. And again, a lot of people, like, the brain is doing everything. You know, the heart's a dumb pump that squirts blood around the body. And now we realize, well, the heart isn't just a dumb pump that squirts blood around the body. It's quite a, a remarkable organ. And actually the brain and the heart are very much connected. And that actually what the heart is doing has a particularly profound influence on the brain and the heart is beating the brain particularly the stress centers of the brain are often firing at the same time when the heart's beating and that has an impact on our perception so we i'd say that we were leading edge in a lot of our research and that for those people who are wedded to a particular paradigm they often don't like that and so therefore they may criticize i mean another recent area is we have research around the impact of certain energies on humans so earth energies, solar energies, you know, cosmic uh, activity, solar weather, those types of things. And mm -hmm. been recent for a long time, the impact on people's behaviours, body rhythms, biorhythms, heart rate, variability, feedback. And research has even shown that people have increased rates of, of cardio problems, heart attacks, basically, during chaotic space weather and solar activity. And uh, funny enough, that proved to be true as well. In fact, new scientists carried a, an article about that a few weeks ago. So, yeah, over our time, we have had people questioning what we're saying. I think part of the issue with that as well is that as a private organization that has a product to sell, people are perhaps suspicious mm. of what you're always marketing your own stuff, basically. Mm. So yes, yeah, but our research now, what we were saying in the early 90s is being repeated by lots of researchers now. When, and you mentioned HRV a couple of times there, becoming massive now, isn't it? Um, it is. In the last yeah. few years, it is, yeah. bit where it was like... Huge sounds like you guys have been talking about this for a long time we were making products i can only um, imagine what the it was like yeah back yeah then. we were measuring hrv with a consumer product basically in the 90s as by right. feedback product of feeds for it. anyone who isn't aware of hrv and a lot of people have well before you learn about this mm. it would seem to be logical that the heart is like a metronome almost and that's good but it's, it's actually the opposite, isn't it? Yeah, you'd think that, wouldn't you? you think if a system was going to be really optimally efficient, it would be like a metronome. But it's not, no. So our hearts are always speeding up and slowing down. Between each beat, there's different times. There's a big difference between each of the beats. So that's what heart rate variability is, a measure of the variation between the gaps between the heartbeats. And we want more of it as opposed to less of it. So more of it is indicative of you being healthy. It correlates with both physical and psychological resilience. So think of it like elasticity. The more of it you've got, to a point, obviously too much of anything is not necessarily a good thing, but generally to a point you want heart rate variability, a good amount of it for your age. And that is helping you stay fit and healthy and helping you to recover from all of the challenges we put ourselves through physically and mentally. And with the popularity now of HRV, so there's mm. so many different devices that mm. that measure it. Mm. 
some good, some not so good. Because you guys have been in this field a lot longer, are you, do you have any thoughts on, are there any particularly good ones that do help people? So we, we've been in it for a while, but we're specifically interested in heart rate variability coherence. So there's right. 40 or 50 different ways of measuring heart rate variability, right. which are basically looking at how much or how little you've got. And that's right. what most of the devices on the market do. They're measuring you at different times, most of them over a day or so, or your night's sleep or whatever. And then they give you a number and they benchmark you over a, a period of time. And then you monitor your number and you can work out, is my variability good today or is it low? Or is it particularly high? And then that can help you with sports training or lifestyle decisions, stuff like that. So it's just a way of sort of monitoring how you're doing, how stressed you are or how resilient you are. Hmm. There's a lot of great devices out there that do that, which is within varying degrees of accuracy. Apple Watches and Fitbits do that type of thing. Arrow Rings do that type of thing. They're, they're all really good devices. We've never really been interested in that market because what we're interested in is what you can do to your heart rate variability in real time. Right. And that's what coherence is all about. So we can all intentionally shift our heart rhythms into this state called coherence, where they go into this lovely ordered pattern where they speed up and slow down progressively, which is a reflection of what's going on with your autonomic nervous system. The sympathetic and parasympathetic are basically synchronizing with each other. And yeah, no one else has really caught on to that properly yet. I still don't know why. I'm slightly nervous that no one else has cottoned on to that yet because it's it's a really important part of our physiology. We should all be entering degrees of coherence at, at certain points throughout the day and at the night as well, at nighttime as well. Uh, but it's one of these things that you can intentionally do and practice that has significant health benefits. And you mentioned coherence a few times. And I mentioned to you, I've been in the world of the oxygen advantage, Buteco and that sort of thing mm. for six years or so. Yeah. And probably around the same length of time with the whole kind of Wim Hof. So the whole oxygen advantage stuff is very parasympathetic and the whole yeah. Wim Hof stuff very sympathetic. Yeah. But I've never really explored that kind of bit between. that. that and it's funny how you can hear something so many times, but for whatever reason, it doesn't really sink in. And I heard you speak a few months ago at the health coach, something or other, I forget what it was, but you did a presentation there. Mm. And... It's only recently that coherence has really started to make sense to me. So for anyone who's listening, maybe who was as dumb as I was and didn't mm. realize the importance of coherence, could you explain what, what that is? Yeah. So look, let's try to keep it really simple. Then. So the sympathetic, the Wim Hof stuff, yeah, that's like using your accelerator. And it's great stuff. You can exercise the sympathetic and get great results from doing all of that. The oxygen advantage stuff and lots of other techniques are about the parasympathetic, which is more like the brake. So that's helping you slow down, relax, recuperate, all those types of things. Coherence is in the middle, right? So we think, well, the way they explain most of the time, so you're either in sympathetic or you're in parasympathetic. It's not quite as simple as that. There are always inputs from both. It's just that you've got more of one than the other when you're in a sympathetic or a parasympathetic state. So what coherence is, actually, you've got both inputs going on. Uh, and they're, they're in relative balance. Actually, the higher levels of coherence, they're in extreme balance, basically. So it's almost like you've got the accelerator and then the brake, and the accelerator and the brake. And so if you think about efficiency, that is the most efficient way to, to drive your car, work, work your body, mm. is to have these inputs not working against each other, not antagonistic, but synchronizing with each other. Mm. Now, when that happens, very special stuff happens within your body. So the heart's in that rhythm. It's reflecting what's going on with the autonomic nervous system. But these rhythms are oscillations. And actually what's happening is your cardiorespiratory system is resonating at its optimal frequency. So it's like literally vibrating. That might sound weird to some people, but everything's vibrating, we're vibrating. So we start basically vibrating at our optimal frequency. And so what happens then is that all of the other body's systems and processes entrain to that optimal rhythm. So that facilitates homeostasis, so it helps your body to rebalance itself and reorganize and repair. And it also benefits the brain. So the brain starts to follow, the brain waves follow the same rhythm, breathing from the autonomic nervous system. And then the brain, so brain waves synchronize and then basically you get activity in the prefrontal cortex. So that also then enables you to think more clearly as well. So that's what coherence is. It's a real state. It's actually called psychophysiological coherence. It's real and we can measure it. And that's what our tech does. And you can do it anytime you want to. 
and with practice you can get really good at it and that's what our techies give me feedback on so you've got the various sort of devices and i know you've got the apps it's in the syntropy app maybe we can speak about that in a minute but do you also from what i gather from looking at your site you've also got coaches that will help people with what i'm guessing what is of anxiety and stress and whatever yeah is that what your coaches help people with they have with all sorts of things actually we train people to be coaches in our system so it's very much a generalist sort of training and then the people we have coming on the training are people who've decided they want to use heart in their work so they could be coaches it could be health coaches definitely but equally they could be teachers educators right from primary school all the way up to the university they could be medical professionals so we've trained lots of doctors we've trained cardiologists all sorts of therapists from cognitive behavioral therapists to all sorts of different therapeutic modalities, mm. sports coaches. So essentially what they all recognize is that coherence is basically an optimal state. And so whatever your field of interest or expertise, like coherence can be a benefit within that. It doesn't matter whether you're a professional footballer or you're a teacher working with a five-year-old who's got a behavioral problem. It's mm. this stuff is valuable in your world and it complements beautifully lots of the other wonderful tools and techniques that are out there as well and so you mentioned about like professional football are (laughs) any professional sports teams have they realized the value of things like this yeah for sure so there's teams in the premier league that are using heart math english and world cricket board coaches have used heart math english institute of sport so there's there's coaches who always on the lookout for effective tools or powerful tools There's coaches who recognize that you can't use the same tools all the time with everybody. You've got to have different tools that resonate in different ways. Yeah, it's, it's not like a policy of a certain football club to always use the heart math or whatever, but there are lots of coaches out there who have heart math within their toolbox and are, are using it. Professional cycling as well, some other area. And so just then I touched upon that, that app, Syntropy, and it, it's funny, actually. I, I just started using it last night for the first time, and it's been on my phone for months. <laughs> And for a couple of months, I completely forgot who it was that told me about it. And I looked at this app and I thought, what is that? <laughs> and I didn't have time to explore it. And it was only last night I was watching you on another podcast. And I went, oh, that's what Syntropy is. So I started using it last night for the first time. So it seems like a, a very good app from what I've seen of it. Yeah, as well. So Syntropy actually isn't a heart math thing. It's, my, it's another hat that I wear. So there's the, the part of me that's heart math. And then Syntropy is actually a startup, a lockdown startup. It's a couple of years old now. But it's just another way, actually, for people to learn and practice coherence. So I'm just really passionate about how we get coherence out there. I think we're living in such a stressed society. and Yeah, it's just crazy. And I I read the other day that there's half a million more people on antidepressants now than there were a year ago. And it's just, it's terrifying, really. The the real pandemic, I think, at the moment is stress. Mm. So I'm just, and I'm I'm always interested in, how do we get this stuff out there? And heart math is one way. The technology, though, isn't cheap. Not everybody can access that. And I'm also a big fan of the power of art and music. And if you think about it, we consume art and we consume music because we want to shift our emotions. We're looking for some sort of emotional experience, whether it's to terrify ourselves or to chill out. And so that's what Syntropy is. So what we do is we create these beautiful video artworks. So it's beautiful art, it's mostly abstract digital art, lovely music, like mostly chill out music, electronica and some green instrument stuff. We make these lovely short videos that you can use either to practice coherence, so they pace the breathing with the visuals and the music. So it just makes coherence practice really easy, and really enjoyable. There's another function which is just for relaxation. So that's more of the parasympathetic stuff. Yeah, you just get lost in the beautiful art. And there's another function called elevate, which is more the sympathetic stuff, which sort of activates you and uplifts you a little bit. Mm. So yeah, that's, that's what the app's all about. And we collaborate with international artists and we match make artists with musicians. And that's how we release a new video each week. So it's like this ever-growing library of lovely video artworks that you can either breathe to or relax to or get a little bit more activated to. And as, as you were explaining that, it made me think about, I don't know, binaural beats come into my mind. Mm. Can you ever, do you ever see there's a mixture with that? Yeah, so we, we, in our own art that we created, we use binaurals, but we use them actually to create 360 degree or an 8D eight-dimensional experience so it's not really about then training brain states with the way that we use the binaurals we're more about the music but actually i think where we're going with the app and where we're developing it we will move into the binaural side we did carry a video by an artist artist musician called vinco zone a few weeks ago that does contain some binaural aspects as well 
But yeah, that's certainly an angle that we'll be moving down as well. But for the moment, we're really focused on it needs to be nice music as opposed to a lot of the binaural stuff is actually just the noise. Mm. I think it's great because it, it does great things for your brain, mm. but it's not music a lot of it. So anyone who's listening to this show now and is wondering, well, how might Syntropy help me? What would you say? Okay, so basically these short videos, they just, they absorb you, they are absorb your mind. So they very quickly help you to detach from all of the kind of stressy stuff that you're worrying about. So the art is absorbing your mind. The music is soothing your emotions. So very quickly we have an emotional response and a physiological response to art and music. They're very powerful for shifting mood very quickly. And particularly the, the ones in what we call the breathe function, they are helping you with coherence as well. So if you watch the videos and you use that to pace your breathing and get yourself into coherence, then the coherence state is going to help you. So if you're feeling stressed or anxious or depressed or just like any form of unpleasant negative feeling and emotion, these videos can really quickly help you to transition out of that and into a better place. And we've got you know, amazing testimonials from clients saying, oh, I, had, I was having a really bad, I've got a thyroid problem, I had really low mood. I watched a couple of videos, made me feel so much better. People who have got a creative block and oh, get me frustrated. They just watch a couple of videos and then say, oh, then I came up with a good idea. So they work. They're based in science and they work. I wondered when I was watching them, mm. a lot of people struggle with meditation. Mm. And for someone who does struggle with meditation, this might be a way of getting similar effects and having something to focus on which may yeah. maybe stop them, their minds wandering so much. This is the science that sits behind it. So the coherence breathwork is one part of the science. But another part of the science is focused attention meditation. So when we place our focus on something external and either concentrate on it or lose ourselves in it, mm -hmm. abstract art, geometric art, mandalas, they're very powerful for that. Mandalas and geometries have been used for centuries millennia to, to achieve those types of aims mm. so it does it makes it very easy for you to focus on that one thing and the benefit of focusing on something external whilst you focus on something internal like your breathing mm. is is even greater so for sure we think that part of the market is people who just don't get on with mindfulness and meditation tried it can't do it mm. don't notice the difference too difficult whereas these videos they're only between three and five minutes long mm -hmm. and you can just watch them on your phone or your tablet anytime any place so it just makes it a lot easier yeah i think it's a it's another tool that's out there and it will suit a lot of people who aren't necessarily into the meditation the mindfulness piece and you've got there's like a fried free trial period as well isn't there so yeah free trial for a month so you can cancel anytime you like up to the month and, and then you can either take out an annual subscription, it's only $29.99, or a monthly subscription, which is $2.99. It's not an expensive app at all. And yeah, but give it a go. You've got the free monthly trial. There's, mm. uh, so at the moment, th this week, there's 55 videos in it at the moment. We release a brand new video every single week. So it's an ever-growing mm. sort of gallery of video artworks. Mm. That's what subscriptions paying for is the, the video each week and the existing gallery that's in there. And on going back to HeartMap then, mm -hmm. so there's the various devices there. I noticed that there was quite a few different devices. So how would those devices help people? Would someone's got some kind of issue, maybe it's anxiety or stress or having problems sleeping. How would those different devices help people? So the devices are all doing the same thing, the different positioning in the market basically is they're either for consumer use, which would be what we call the inner balance. There's actually three of them, but they all do the same thing. One is a Bluetooth version. And then there's two wired versions. So if you don't like Bluetooth, you can have ones that just plug into either an Apple phone or an Android phone, but they're doing exactly the same thing. Mm. So they're for, for members of the public. The other products that we have are more for, for professionals who want to use it with clients or patients. And they can actually mm. access a client's inner balance sessions as well. But for, for most people, it's the inner balance. And what that's doing then is it's giving you, it's measuring your heart rhythms, your, your, your HRV. Mm. And it's got a clever algorithm, which is then measuring the degree of coherence within your heart rhythms and it's giving you visual feedback so as you practice you start engaging in the breathing techniques we'll, we'll share a technique with people before the end of the show because we shouldn't do that we shouldn't leave without sharing something but basically when you're practicing with the technology you're doing the breathing you'll see some feedback then in real time the impact that's having on your heart rate variability also then recalling positive feelings and emotions like the, the gratitude appreciation love etc and based on the feedback, you can then adjust what you're doing 
So you could adjust your breathing, the, the, the rate or the depth. You can follow breath pace, which makes it easier, but each of us is, is slightly different. So you can fine tune your own sort of optimal breathing rate to get your highest levels of coherence. So it helps you with that. Frankly, helps you with the habit as well. It shows all about habits and, and, and health. And for me, that's why I continue to use it. It's the habit of practice. And I mm. like to get my 20 minutes a day fix of using the device. And I like to be able to track my scores as well and compare sessions, like a whole history of, of sessions. So if you're into measurement as well, any quantified health gang or biohacker gang out there, then, yeah, it's a great way of building that habit, but also measuring yourself seeing yourself improve over time and then when you reach that sort of plateau state of high performance or your ability to get coherent you can keep yourself there and you'll see yourself modulating on a daily basis as well can you think of any examples of someone who's maybe had some real issues with their health and they've used one of the devices and it's given them some like some really good results yeah i've worked with plenty of people who've seen really strong results so from things like autoimmune conditions We've seen people, they start with very low heart rate variability and they find it very difficult to get coherent. But with practice, and and this stuff isn't magic tone, you've got to do it. But with practice, we've seen those people get more HRV. So that's that's an objective measure that they're getting physiologically healthier. Mm. But also we then see them be able to achieve high levels of coherence after a month or two which means that basically their autonomic nervous system is then going back into balance. So these autoimmune and autonomic nervous system complaints that many people have, certainly the coherence practice, we see it time and time again, can help people to manage that, along with some of the other lifestyle stuff as well. Mm. Other examples, people with anxiety. So again, people with anxiety tend to have high heart rates, but very low HRV. And then what we see typically is if people do the practice, then over time we'll see their resting heart rate will come down we we'll see the amount of HRV increase. And again, we'll see that they have learned to take control of their autonomic nervous system and they can put themselves in this lovely ordered coherence pattern. So you know, it's evidence that they've acquired a skill and the practicing of that skill is benefiting them and helping them to heal and recover from whatever the physical or mental condition was that went before it. And I've never used one of your devices, but just from your explanation, it seems to me that it's going to help with so many different areas. So if, if someone is having trouble sleeping or with stress or anxiety, and that could be the kickstart they need to then help with various other chronic issues that they have as well. Yeah, I think that one of the problems that people often face is they don't really know what to do to help themselves. Hmm. They may have tried some other things as well. But also with certain practices, it's hard to know if you're doing it right. and It's hard to know if it's working. So a benefit of the technology, it validates for you. It's like mm. you are doing something. Even if you can't feel it, you've got no sense of it whatsoever, it will validate for you that you are intentionally controlling your autonomic nervous system and your heart rhythms. And that's empowering, really empowering. So once, once someone gets a realization of that, oh, I've had this anxiety disorder, I thought that anxiety just ruled my life. But actually what I've just seen is that I can intentionally overcome the physiological hard wiring and psychological hard wiring of my anxiety i can do that that's mm. really empowering and that quick win can then be enough to lead to dedicated practice going back to that and again i keep forgetting the guy's name is it roland 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 dr roland mccrady our mad professor yeah dr roland mccrady okay the mad professor and he was <laughs> talking about magnet- magnetic fields he was talking about how you can be someone who's got a sort of coherent everything's working coherently they're in a very calm state they can come into a room where someone is maybe quite anxious mm-hmm. and really calm them down because of mm-hmm. the electromagnetic fields. Can you maybe explain about that more? Yeah, so this is a hypothesis we have and some interesting research to support it. But I think most people have felt when certain people enter a room, we mm-hmm. felt either something good, like Carl, this seems to be a nice person, they've got a lovely effect on the room, or the opposite, which is, oh my God, you know, that person's literally fizzing. The vibe's coming off that. We use this in our language. It's like picking up a good vibe from someone or a bad vibe from someone. Yeah. So a lot of that obviously is a non-verbal communication and stuff like that. Our hypothesis is that in addition to that, we are also picking up the heart's electromagnetic field. Hmm. And this is, again, when it comes to kind of the skeptics and stuff, they don't have a problem with animals being able to do this and animals sensing like really subtle fields and energies. So it's fine if animals can do it, but no, humans, no way, we can't do it. So really, even though we're like the most sophisticated creatures in the known universe. 
So our hypothesis is that, yeah, we can, that, that electromagnetic component of us, which we are always emitting, and which is basically imprinted with our emotions, hmm. that is, in, is influencing other people, that they can, mostly unconsciously, they're picking up on it, basically. Hmm. And that we are in charge of our electromagnetic field. Hmm. We can put different information into that field through practice and coherence, that is creating this ordered or stable electromagnetic signal mm. and that that ordered stable electromagnetic signal has the potential to lead other people into the same state. Mm. And there's a very strong body of research around synchronization, not just heart rhythms, but brain waves, the breathing rates, all sorts of like biomarkers show that we are synchronizing and desynchronizing with each other all the time. Mm. And so, our particular area of interest is that energetic level, particularly around the electromagnetic field, and that, yeah, we can literally show up in an environment in a way that is conducive to interacting productively with others. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating. The whole, that whole kind of EMF area is fascinating in, in many ways. Yeah, for sure. You mentioned about autoimmunity and so on, and, and so I wondered about, are you able to help people specifically with conditions such as asthma? And so yeah, in fact, many kind of breathing issues, so asthma, COPD, emphysema, those types of things. And yes, really good research to show that so the practicing these techniques beneficial. I mean, independent research, not just our research. There's a, a researcher called Paul Lira who's been looking at this, and Richard Gevitz has been looking at this stuff for, for a couple of decades now and showing that the practice of coherence, they call it resonance, but coherence breath work, particularly with biofeedback, there's pacing your breathing, giving you feedback on that. That's really beneficial for asthma, COPD, et cetera. Mm. So it can help people. And, and yeah, one of the things with an asthma attack is they're very stressful. You, you think you've got one coming on, you, you get stressed. Mm. Well, through the coherence practice, you can regulate your stress. So if you can manage your stress, it's also highly likely that you're not going to have such a severe asthma attack. Mm. And stress brings on asthma attacks. So if you're reducing stress in your life, then maybe you'll have them less frequently. Yeah, for sure. It's the practice is benefiting the whole of your cardiorespiratory system. You mentioned that the heart math started what, in the early 90s, probably even in the 80s. When did you first get involved in heart math? How, how did that happen? It was completely by accident. So I was doing, I was actually going to business masters and I got really interested in leadership, but particularly emotional intelligence and authentic leadership. And I basically realized I didn't know who I was and what I should do with my life, basically. So I was really interested in, okay, what is emotional intelligence? How could I behave more emotionally intelligently? How could I be more authentic? How could I discover who I am, first of all, and then live that more authentically? And yeah, as kind of often happens when you're in that sort of space and searching, things pop up and heart popped up. So I literally discovered it on a lecture one day and I just thought that, if you, that coherence thing, that's emotional intelligence. That's how you can be emotionally intelligent if you're stressed. So you do that breathing thing and you do that change your emotions thing. And that will stop you being stressed and acting from stress and being a smart person that does stupid things and will put you in a state where actually you then get the prefrontal cortex back online and you can be, do and say something much more appropriate and productive. So that's how I got into it. That was back in 2007, I think, I lose track. And I just started to practice the techniques. I'd seen a demo with the technology as well and I'm a gadget freak, so I bought the gadget and it just worked for me very quickly. I noticed changes i noticed that i was less stressed i wasn't catastrophizing as much I even noticed physical benefits i wasn't getting aches and pains and pulled muscles and stuff from sports training i wasn't getting ill as frequently colds and flus and stuff and the measurement really appealed to me so that's so i was hooked and then so i was practicing all of this stuff myself before i got involved in the business so that's my entry into the world of heart math yeah and then you've been more involved how when did you actually join a company so I was involved with a consultancy that had a, a, a license from about 2008, but then as HeartMath UK, 2012. So that's when basically we are off the license under the brand of HeartMath. So yes, yeah, so it's been, wow, it's been 10 years. One of the things I was talking to you about before we started recording was mm. Vim Hoff is very good at publicizing himself. <laughs> And Patrick yeah. McEwen from the Oxygen Advantage seems to be getting mm. better at that as well. Mm. 
are you guys are going to be able to make a bit more noise yeah, to let people know what a great product <laughs> you know, there doesn't seem to be as much awareness of heart yeah i think if there's one thing i could say that i, I think heart Math could be better at it's the marketing side of things definitely we've been very fortunate actually in that there's been a number of personal development um, science meets spirituality gurus who really like what we've done and they use our research in their own work. So people like Joe Dispenza and Greg Braden, Bruce Lipton, there's Tony Robbins talks about heart math as well. They're really fortunate in that those people who are very good at marketing themselves mm. have actually in effect marketed us by talking about us so much. We have no commercial involvement with any of these people. They respect the research that we do and they respect our techniques and they share them with their audiences. Mm. So in a way, we've been very fortunate up till now and that we haven't really needed to be amazing at marketing ourselves because mm. they've done such a good job for us. Right. Having said that, that's not to say that we should rest on our laurels. And actually, we are releasing a new app, completely radically overhauled app and a brand new sensor in the first quarter of next year. So from that point, we had better get a lot better at, at marketing ourselves. And uh, yeah, up to now, we've relied really on, on just online advertising, Facebook advertising and stuff like that. But as, as we all know, the world's changing a lot. So we we need to learn from the, the Gen Ys and the millennials and the youth coming through about where they like to find out about things and how they should be communicated with. You just touched upon some of the people such as Joe Dispenza and Bruce Lipton and so on. So that leads me into a question I ask every guest is about, is there any books that come to mind that have really moved you for any reason? Yeah, so the big one is Victor Franklin's Man's Search for Meaning. In terms of being moved, you know, I've... I've read loads of personal development books and stuff, and there's, there's some great ones out there. But I wouldn't say that they're necessarily moving as such, unless you have a significant personal transformation. But yeah, Man's Search for Me is just one of those ones that sort of stopped me in my tracks and really made me think deeply about life, experience of life, uh, how I might survive in those, literally survive in the types of situations that he did, and how he managed to do that when other people didn't. And it may be. It made me realize that basically emotional state is the most important thing when it comes to managing your life. And that even in those situations where some people were completely broken, some people broke very quickly, some mm. people were ground down over time, he was able through his emotional state and by where he directed his attention, his feelings, emotions and thoughts, he was able to survive in an incredibly awful situation you know dangerous situation yeah and how for me. do you remember when it was how long ago was it that you read that i can't remember i've read it a few times and i'm pretty sure that i read it it would have been in around the period that i was at university and discovering all of this stuff so yeah it's quite long story short one of the reasons i did the mba is i lost my first wife to breast cancer so that was a sort of crucible moment in life where i re was a reappraising everything like who I was, like what the hell this is all about. And so I was reading a lot of personal development and sort of spiritual books. So that was 2005. And then I revisited it over the years since a couple of times at least, most recently about a year and a half ago. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a profound book. Because when we read a book and then we come back to it a few years later, we can, the book often seems very different because obviously we're mm. very different. So it made me think about from the first time you read it and then it sounds like from when you've read it later you're now immersed in a whole heart math world and a lot, mm. know a lot more about emotional intelligence and so on so you're probably seeing very different things from when you've come back to it certainly makes sense to me more subsequent readings than it did the first it made sense to me but i, I understand how and why it works now because of all of the, the heart math stuff and the, understanding the physiology and emotions and stuff like that when i read it the first time I, I couldn't even really probably tell you what an emotion was and certainly didn't understand the physiological side of things and just a very generalist understanding of what stress is and does to you yeah so certainly had much more of that um understanding and appreciation and also i think because i've been through that experience and, and since then a couple of other periods in life where things have been very challenging and stressful mm. and being able to modulate my stress and transition through those periods right. relatively healthily without being damaged by those experiences right. yeah that the, the, it's been brought to life more for me in terms of personal experience if people want to find out more about about you about heart math where would they go to so in the uk we're at heartmath.co.uk that's the website the us is heartmath.com 
And actually, the non-profit part of HackMath has a separate website, which is HackMath.org. That's where we have a lot of our research and stuff as well. Okay, HackMath.com, HackMath.org. And then the Syntropy side of things is Syntropy States, all one word, .com, Syntropy States. Or we just search for the app on Apple or Google, Syntropy. And if anyone wants to reach out to me directly, then probably the best thing is info at heartmath.co.uk. And you, and you kindly offered us a, a discount code as well, haven't you? Absolutely, yeah. So if people are interested in the, the HeartMath products, then the discount code is it's HP20. That code's live till the end of the year, by the way. It won't apply if there's a sale on, but for non-sale prices, there's a 20% discount. So a really decent discount there and available till 31st of December. And is that just for the UK or for the US as well? It's just for the UK, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And finally, Gavin, is there is there a quote that has resonated with you for any reason? Yeah, the quote is the uh, is the Victor Frank Frankel one. So yeah, it's the between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and freedom. And uh, yeah, that's also really what Hartmut is all about. If you recognise you got the stimulus, you recognise in that those milliseconds that you do have the power to choose your response, then yeah, you can. And the heart math is to have just focus on the heart, slow and deep balance the breathing, and actually you will respond as opposed to, to react. So your response will be much better in terms of productive, appropriate, etc. It is, as I, I said to you before, it is my favorite quote. I, mm. There's such a deepness to it if you really give it some thought. And I've mm. come, I come back to this time and time again over the last few years, and I've trying to i've been trying to purposely work on widening that pause between yeah. the stimulus and the response mm. so that i don't get i don't have the default reactions to someone cutting me up when i'm driving or yeah. to something else happening or whatever and i i, I feel that i am much more yeah i'm able to choose my response better than before it was a default response now i'm able to choose my response more yeah yeah no i think techniques like heart math certainly mindfulness and meditation as well they do literally extend that gap we know that we're hardwiring a connection between the prefrontal cortex and the amygdala and so the prefrontal cortex is able to exert greater control over the amygdala so it, that that gap that is a real gap and and the more work we do the, the more able we are to notice it and then intervene tony we should share a technique with everyone before we go so this is just called quick coherence we like simple names in heart math. okay so the technique basically all, all you're doing is just sitting nice and comfortably Keep your eyes open, close them if you want, doesn't matter, whichever. And then the first thing we do is we shift our attention or awareness down into the, the heart area or the chest area. Mm -hmm. Okay. And just putting your hand there can really help with that as well. So our, our focus goes there. And then what we want to do is we basically want to breathe a little bit slower and deeper. And we want to imagine that our breath's flowing in and out of the heart or the chest area. So you can't literally, obviously, so keep the belly nice and relaxed. We want the diaphragm to be able to move fully. What we're doing is we're imagining the breaths flowing in and flowing out of the heart of the chest and we're trying to get that breath nice and balanced. So maybe try a 10 second cycle, five seconds for the in breath, five seconds for the out breath. But we're all a bit different. So if you want to speed it up a bit or slow it down, that's fine as well. So we'll just do that for sort of 30 seconds and then I'll explain the next step. Okay, so now all we're going to do is we're just going to recall a feeling of care or appreciation or gratitude, or love for someone or something in our lives. It doesn't matter what it is or who it is, it just needs to be real. And now that we've got that feeling of the, the love, appreciation or gratitude or care, we just spend a minute now just breathing that feeling in and out with the breath. So just gently breathing the feeling in and out.
Okay, so what we've all been doing then is taking control of our autonomic nervous system. We've put our hearts into this lovely ordered rhythmic pattern. Um, if we really connected with the feelings, then we would have released some different biochemicals, different hormones. We would have released some DHEA, which is vitality hormone. If we really connected with like love and care, we might even release some oxytocin, which can buffer the stress response. Really simple technique, obviously, but actually really quite powerful benefits. Yeah, I can see that would be really helpful for many people. So yeah, thank you yeah. for that, Gavin. And it will be good for people to maybe rewind that a couple of times and and, and listen yeah. back to. Uh, the explanation of how to do that. Thanks for your time, Gavin. And uh, yeah, best of luck with hopefully when this, the, the new app comes out. And is it this year or next year, did you say? The new app, I'm sure it's, a, it's an update of the current app. So anyone who's already got it will get it anyway. But yeah, it's going right. to come out the first quarter of next year sometime. Fantastic. Okay, thanks a lot, Gavin. Thanks, Tony. Cheers. Next week, episode 80 with Dr. Judson Brandis. He is a urologic surgeon and author of The 21st Century Man. He's a doctor, a board certified urologist who currently practices men's health and sexual medicine in Northern California. He's completed two years of general surgical training and four years of urology uh, residency at UCLA Medical Center. And he now helps men in many different areas of health. The book 21st Century Man has a lot of advice from himself and also advice from 50 top doctors and men's health experts. And it's an excellent book. It's a very big book. So we're gonna find out a lot more about that, how he helps men in general in next week's episode. That's episode 80 with Dr. Judson Brandeis. Hope you've enjoyed this week's episode and see you next week. Thanks for tuning into the Habits and Health Podcast, where we believe creating healthy habits should be easy. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and leave us a review on your favorite podcast app. You can also sign up for email updates and learn about coaching and workshop opportunities at TonyWinyard.com. See you next time on the Habits and Health Podcast.